Hello, fellow seekers, heretics, and guildmates. Welcome back to Idea Sex, where we take an analytical lens to mysticism and spirituality. My name is Kiara, the Mad Witch, and today we are taking a deeper tumble down the exciting rabbit hole that is psychic research. And if you're not familiar with psi research, you may want to check out that video first there. That's my best high-level overview. And what most people don't know is that there is an overwhelming amount of evidence for psychic uh, phenomena, but I would say it has largely been rejected and suppressed by the mainstream. And I think that um, things are going to be changing regarding that sooner rather than, than later, but most people, for the most part, don't know a whole lot about this. And so um, one of the things I like to do on this channel is just bring awareness to some of the research that has been done. So that's an overview of psychic research and the compelling evidence for it. I think it's compelling. You can make up your own mind. Um, but today we're going to be taking a more granular look. Uh, we're going to go from the eagle's eye view to actually looking at some of the individual studies or one study in particular. And this is a meta-analysis from Honorton, Charles Honorton and Diane C. Ferrari. And so what they did is they analyzed huge swaths of data um, on experiments involving precognition. So let's start by defining a couple of things. This is a meta-analysis on precognition and meta-analysis is a rigorous statistical analysis that combines the results of multiple scientific studies. The key here is that a meta-analysis is like the pinnacle of proof in the scientific world because we are not looking at individual studies, we are looking at large swaths of data. And precognition, uh, in this paper, precognition refers to the non-inferential prediction of future events. So precognition is a form of clairvoyance that involves accessing information beyond time and space, right? So seeing the future. Anecdotal claims of future telling have occurred throughout human history in virtually every culture and period. Today, such claims are generally believed to be based on factors such as delusion, irrationality, and superstitious thinking. In other words, uh, if you believe in precognition, you a crazy bitch. And bitch, I am crazy, but I'm not wrong. The concept of precognition runs counter to accepted notions of causality and appears to conflict with current scientific theory. Causality, schmalzality. So causality just means cause and effect. And uh, the way we think of causality is like, I do something now and it affects something a little bit later. And so we think of time as being linear, right? It happens in a straight line. Things are sequential. The ancestors did not believe this and quantum mechanics is actually starting to catch up that maybe time is not as linear as we previously thought. And I really do think that all of the major scientific discoveries in our lifetime uh, are going to be just rediscoveries of what the oracles and seers and shaman have been telling us for millennia. But that's idea sex for another time. Nevertheless, over the past half century, a substantial number of experiments have been reported claiming empirical evidence for the hypothesis of precognition. Subjects in forced choice experiments, according to many reports, have correctly predicted to a statistically significant degree the identity or order of target stimuli randomly selected at a later time. Two things we need to touch on here. First is what a forced choice experiment is. And second is the meaning of statistically significant. So in a forced choice experiment, uh, this is a kind of, of psychic test is what we'll call it. And what you might have someone do is sit down and a person, they would sit down and they would try to identify which of four targets is going to appear on a computer screen. So you have four different, we'll say symbols, like a, a square, a circle, a triangle, a hexagon. And they have to guess what it is that the computer is going to show on the screen. Um, but the thing is, the thing about this that makes it a precognition experiment is that the target is not chosen until later after after the person has made their, their mental guess as to what it is that that computer is going to display. And if a person guesses correctly, that is called a hit. So that is a forced choice experiment. The second thing we need to touch on is statistically significant. And this is one of the biggest hangups in sci research because people just aren't impressed by statistics. And I'll give an example. Um, in random number generator studies, this is one of those classes of experiments that have exceeded Six Sigma. And the way that they work is you have a person sit down in front of a random number generator or a quantum noise generator. And all this machine does is spit out really random numbers. But when you have a person direct their intention, uh, their conscious awareness at one of these machines, something really weird happens and the numbers stop being so random. That does not mean that I sit down and I think seven, 
seven, seven at this machine and it only ever spits out seven. It's not like that. It stops being so random in a way that is statistically, statistically significant. But again, uh, because most people don't understand statistics, myself included, it doesn't seem very impressive. If I can't levitate a car and throw it at my enemies to vanquish them, how does this help me? Have you tried therapy? Four major questions were addressed through this meta-analysis. One, is there overall evidence for accurate target identification or above chance hitting in experimental precognition studies? Two, what is the magnitude of the overall precognition effect? And three, is the observed effect related to the variations in method methodological, methodological quality? that could allow a more conventional explanation. Four, does precognition performance vary systematically with potential moderating variables? So translation, is this real? How real? Uh, are scientists just f***ing up? And is this more or less real depending on things like settings, conditions, and the kinds of people who participated? With these burning questions in mind, they analyzed 309 different studies that appeared in 113 publications. These 113 publications were conducted by 62 different senior authors, and all of these studies occurred over a 53-year period. So that ends up giving them a database of about 2 million individual trials from 50,000 or so participants. And um, the experiments themselves are pretty diverse in their design because this does span over half a century, right? So in the earlier studies, they would have been using things like cards and dice, and in the later studies, they would have been using um, computers. Through analyzing all of these studies, they come to the conclusion that uh, the overall effect is strong. Those are their words. How strong? They then throw out a lot of statistics that are only going to make sense to scientists. So I like the way that Dean Radin summarizes it in The Conscious Universe. He says that the combined result of the 309 studies pronounced odds against chance of 10 million billion billion to one. In other words, not chance. Not even a chance that it is chance. <laughs> that is like Hulk levels of strong, okay? Patchouli levels of strong 10 million billion billion to one. Uh, like I've said, I can only count to 10, but what I take away from this is that there's no way that the results of precognitive studies can be due to chance. So to answer those questions we started with, is this real? Yes. Uh, how real? Very. Uh, and our scientists just f up. So Honerton and Ferrari were very careful to screen for different kinds of biases, and they do these through math things. That's the technical term. Um, for example, there is something called the file drawer bias, and that's the idea that the only studies that ever get published are ones that are statistically significant in like a positive way. So if someone has a study where nothing really happens, they don't publish it. And so they use math that I don't understand, okay, to account for um, this particular kind of bias. Maybe, maybe you'll understand it though. So for... I give up. <laughs> Did you catch that? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Math things. <laughs> the point of all that is that the um, statistical significance of the meta-analysis could not be due to selective reporting. And then they do a number of other things to show us that they don't believe the results are from scientists up. So they're very careful, and even after culling a lot of these studies and accounting for a lot of the potential biases, we still end up with something um, that are odds against chance of 10 million billion billion to one. And on one hand, right, who cares whether we can kind of sort of guess what symbol is going to appear on the screen. On the other hand, if you've ever had a precognitive dream, something like this feels very validating. You're like, oh, so this stuff is real. We just don't really understand it. And that's why this is so interesting to me is that a lot of people who study Psy believe that we are just at the infancy of our abilities, where a number of people also believe that we used to have these abilities more so um, historically when we were more attuned to these things. Uh, and now we've sort of forgotten that, but it may reemerge with um, scientific 
understanding. Who freaking knows? But even hypothetically, it's interesting to consider, right? If we could peer into the future, if it's not just, you know, myth and fantasy, if this is an actual thing that people are able to do, maybe we could uh, verify whether our decisions are a good one, right? And whether we're making a good decision for ourselves, for our communities, whether the world is going in a direction that we all like. And so you can think of some real life applications for this that would be helpful, assuming that it is real and that it can be harnessed. I think the application for something like precognition is as endless as our imaginations. And that is it for today. If you enjoy taking uh, a look into some of this not well known, but very um, statistically significant sci research, do subscribe and join the guild. Um, we're currently on a sci research kick, but we do take an analytical lens to other things related to spirituality and mysticism. So in any case, thank you so much for joining me on Ideas Sex today. And until next time, stay blessed.